Good morning, you two, and welcome to Friday's English for the Main and Challenge activity. And we are going to start off by looking back at all of our starters for the week. We've been working hard like Connector to start off with these simple sentences and improve them each day using the learning from the day before. So we started off on Monday with some quite simple sentences. Some of them the shortest you can possibly have a sentence. And we learned that sentences must contain two things. A subject, which is the main noun. There might be other nouns as well. We've got neck and hole in that sentence. But the subject is the main one, the main thing doing what's happening in the sentence. And they're all animals in our sentences. We had elephant, monkey and giraffe. And sentences also have to have a verb that the animal or the subject in any sentence is doing. Elephant was feeling sad. Monkey laughed. Giraffe pulled. So they're all doing something. And then we had a few extra details, but not very much. So on Tuesday, we added some adverbs to two of the sentences to say how they were doing those things. The adverbs are purple. How did monkey laugh? Loudly. How did giraffe pull? Carefully. You can see sometimes the adjective, the adverb, sorry, go before the verb and sometimes afterwards. Monkey laughed loudly. Giraffe carefully pulled her neck out of the hole. On Wednesday, we added a different type of adverb to the first sentence. We added an adverb not to say how, but to say how much. Elephant felt terribly sad. Then yesterday, we added those adjectives to describe the animals, and we used either comparative or superlative adjectives. That means they end in er uh or s to say they were more of something or the most. So I went for the most. And I got my spellings wrong, but I've corrected them now. The heaviest elephant felt terribly sad. The naughtiest monkey laughed loudly. The tallest giraffe carefully pulled her neck out of the hole. And remember, if the original word ended in a Y, we have to change it to an I. So today, we're going to join two of those sentences together using a conjunction. That's our connector work from yesterday. So we're going to join these two sentences. The heaviest elephant felt terribly sad. The naughtiest monkey laughed loudly. What conjunction could you use to join those two clauses together? The heaviest elephant felt terribly sad. <clears throat> the naughtiest monkey laughed loudly. Well, I went for because. You could have when as well, actually. The heaviest elephant felt terribly sad when the naughtiest monkey laughed loudly. Maybe he was laughing at him. The heaviest elephant felt terribly sad because the naughtiest monkey laughed loudly. And for our, set, our final sentence, I want you to add an extra clause of your own. So can you add a conjunction, you can choose which one, and then add an extra part to your sentence. The tallest giraffe carefully pulled her neck out of the hole when, or the tallest giraffe carefully pulled her neck out of the hole because, and then you can finish off the sentence. Pause the video and have a go now. Here's what I chose. The tallest giraffe carefully pulled her neck out of the hole that it had been stuck in. And did you notice our lovely rainbow of word types? We have now thought about five different types of words in our sentence. Not only have we got a verb and a subject, so at least one noun in our sentence, we've added adverbs, adjectives and conjunctions. And I just want to show you the difference it's made to our original sentences. Elephant felt sad, monkey laughed. Were quite boring sentences. Look what we've changed them into now. Not just elephant felt sad, monkey laughed. The heaviest elephant felt terribly sad because the naughtiest monkey laughed loudly. And instead of just having giraffe pulled her neck out of the hole, we've got the tallest giraffe carefully pulled her neck out of the hole that it had been stuck in. Now, while you don't want to add all of these things to every sentence that you write, Using them in your writing in different sentences will make your whole piece of writing sound much more interesting and exciting for the people that are reading it. And remember, that's what we're aiming for. 
So that's why we've been working hard on putting all of these things into our writing, because it makes it much more interesting for the people reading it. So today, now we've practiced most of these things on our roadmap, not that one yet, it's your turn to have a go at using them in your writing. Now we're not quite ready to write our final story, so we're going to write a part of our final story, and today we are learning to write a character description. We might use some of our adverbs today in our character description. Pause the video if you want to, to have a look through those. We might use some, well, we need to use some subordinating conjunctions and coordinating conjunctions in our writing today. So some of those as well as some of those. And we also need to try and use some of our comparative and superlative adjectives. Now we can't use those just to talk about one animal. So if you're talking about elephant being smelly, you might want to say he was smellier than another animal. In fact, he was the smelliest animal in the whole of Tinga Tinga. So think about those features from our waggle. Can you use those features in your own writing? And that's what I'd like you to do today. So you're going to write an introduction to describe the elephant. Now, if you want some ideas, I would go back and have a look at my introduction on giraffe. So should we have a look at what I've done? You see, there was a time when giraffe was short. Straight away there, got an adjective. Her horns were short, her legs were shorter, and her neck was the shortest of all. So we've also got a green conjunction in there, and. And she was also a fussy eater. Now we talked about how normally you're not allowed and at the beginning of sentences as you're writing a Tinga Tinga tale, and that's the style they're written in, you are allowed to do it just for today, as long as you promise that you won't do it in all your writing. She would often get a poorly tummy if she ate anything unusual. So we've got another conjunction in there. One day, she decided to try eating some juicy fresh mangoes because they looked so delish delicious. Now that so is not so the conjunction. It's not saying so she went off. It's saying they were so delicious. They were very delicious. So we don't underline that as a conjunction. Gently, she pulled one from the tree and carefully put it into her mouth. And now we've got some purple adverbs. We have got gently and we have got carefully. So I'd like you to do some writing about the elephant. Can you beat me? So in mine, I have used two adverbs. Can you use more than two adverbs in yours? I have used short, shorter, shortest, and another short. So can you use more than four of those comparative adjectives and superlative adjectives? You can have the root words as well counting in that. And this is going to be the real challenge. I have used one, two, three coordinating conjunctions and one, two subordinating conjunctions. That's five altogether. Can you beat that? Can you write a sentence that starts with a subordinating conjunction? That's your challenge. Now, I have done some things to help you, even though I don't want you to beat me. So I have given you a little word bank here. You don't have to just use these words. And but so, that, if, when, because, you've got the coordinating conjunctions and the subordinating conjunctions underneath. Then I've given you some adjectives you might use. I haven't added the endings on, so I'm not going to give you that. But you might want to use big, grey, clumsy, smelly. I've also put in those nice phrases, big head, tiny brain, and annoying flies. You might like to think about some expanded noun phrases and connect back to the work from last week. And then I've only given you three adverbs, but you can put in your own ones as well, noisily, clumsy and sadly. And here's your beginning sentence. You can get rid of it and start completely again if you want. If you want to do that, cross that out and start with your own sentence. But if you want to, you can start your work with, in the middle.
king of the African plain, there lived a very sad elephant. I can't wait to see your pieces of writing and find out if any of you have beaten me with how many of those things you've put in. Good luck, everybody. Remember, you're just writing the introduction. <laughs>